advertising was a sort of miraculous box of tricks that exploded onto viewers' screens. They didn't know where it came from. It sort of had a magical quality to it, which touched the product like a magic wand. In shops, you would see signs which said, as advertised on television, as though it was some deification of the product that it should appear on the television. Nowadays, when we talk to consumers, in they're much, much more sophisticated. I don't feel as if I'm talking to consumers at all. I feel as if I'm talking to a bunch of creative directors or professional critics. They assess the advertising as they do the programs. Is it good? Is it good enough? Is it better than this or worse than that? They also know that it's a game we are playing together. We do this to try to get them to think better about the product. They say, I wouldn't have done that strategy, or I would have tried to make it funnier, or maybe it lacks a little style. It isn't as good as that tango commercial or something like that. And we are facing not the true consumer, or maybe they are true consumers, but they are much more sophisticated people than ever they were before. They have lost their innocence. We have taught them to be critics. People are becoming more advertising literate. They're becoming more aware of that, more conscious of the games being played. And I think that's a good thing because it opens up the dialogue between uh, advertisers and the target market. You just have to start playing more and more interesting games with people. Um, it's not enough just to to um, provide sort of very British entertainment um, in which you hide the selling message. I mean, now you can be upfront about the selling message. People know they're being sold to. It's a game. As consumers become more educated about advertising, they're, they're actually pushing the standards. We're becoming more accountable for the quality of our strategies, for the quality of our ideas, and the all-round quality of our thinking. If we serve up uh, a strategy or an idea or an execution to a, a client uh, uh, who might say, well, let's see what the consumer thinks. If we serve up to the consumer who rejects it, we're penalised because the consumer won't buy that product. I think it's a very favourable um, trend that advertising and particularly creativity is becoming much more accountable. Look twice at what you are saying to consumers. Um, they will talk back to their TV set. Um, one of the techniques we use in uh, the research we do in testing commercials is to ask people to speak back to the commercial. If, if you could talk back to it, what would you say? And very often the kinds of comments that you'll hear people make are, come on, what kind of nonsense is that? Do you really expect me to believe it? And that's what we must look at when we create advertising. Uh, 30 second or 60 second uh, network television here in the US you're seeing uh, commercials by corporations that are, that are very much a combination of uh, uh, an editorial look with an advertising message. Mm. Sometimes they use old uh, uh, anchor people from newscasts as their spokespeople, so it gives it kind of a more editorial air about it. And I think that that may have come a bit from the uh, cable side with the longer commercials that almost pretend to be a TV show. And then like five minutes into it, they're trying to sell you a uh, an exercise device, um, and, and maybe the success of that is, is uh, going over onto uh, the commercial side, or maybe it's just a new new trend that people think uh, is different and is going to work. But I think we'll see more and more of it, definitely. Find that there's millions of different types of typefaces, and you found that um, during the 70s and 80s, people tended to stay with certain typefaces for certain different product categories and, and try to line it with certain different feelings. But now, there's a big trend towards trying to have that new innovative type, uh, typeface for your um, creative work, especially in print work, to try and get through the clutter. 
because you find going through a, a magazine, you'll find every single ad has that same times or that same Roman typeface. And when you come to an ad which has that, maybe the feeling that the actual type, typography fits in with the actual product itself, whether it be the, the um, product image or the, the um, feeling of the uh, uh, imagery of the product, I've already said that. <laughs> okay. um, anyway, that's, that's my idea on typography. Mm. You also said that a lot of companies were changing uh, logos around yeah. now. I suppose well, companies have been around for a long time, up to you know, 40, 50 years, and they found that their image has gone, not, not downhill, but become very old, and the typography in terms of the image has still been the same. But now they're trying to change that and become more up and, up and with the marketing, up with the, the society and the changes that are happening now. So you find mm. that a lot of changes are happening with um, corporate logos, um, mm. especially big corporations have been around for a long time. Um, and you find new typefaces coming up there, and they try and fit those typefaces with what they feel their corporate image is. I think that's very important, especially if you're trying to try and translate that across into advertising too. Technology for 500 channels is probably not too far away. Uh, what appears on that 500 channels is, is, of course, the great debate. I think the reality is that the vast majority of those channels will be occupied by on-demand movies. So that you as a consumer, if you want to watch The Bridge on the River Kwai, and you're home at 8 o'clock at night, you can dial it up. Uh, and, and watch it at your convenience. And as I understand it, a large number of the channels that will be available will be required to, uh, to make Movies On Demand available. Uh, all that said and done, the reality is I think that there will still be, here in America, the four main television networks, it will still attract a huge audience. Uh, there will be room for another 10, maybe 15 major cable TV stations. But beyond that, I don't think the money is available uh, to underwrite, say, a hundred cable TV, specialized uh, cable TV stations. There's just not enough advertising revenue, enough audience uh, for uh, that much fragmentation. Uh, they may be out there, but they're not going to be making any money, and they're going to probably won't program 24 hours a day. Uh, so I think it's a long time away from the demise of mass market television uh, in America. I, I think it's still alive, but I think it's going away. I'm, I'm glad it's going away uh, because it got way overdone. The same sort of commercials were being done for all sorts of different products, some of which had no business really selling me a lifestyle in the first place. So um, I'm glad it's on the way out. I think it just reached critical mass. I think the whole um, happy white people approach that is showing people interacting somehow with your product and just being overjoyed that they're partaking in it. Um, people didn't believe it and, and it didn't work and it certainly didn't distinguish one product from the next when everyone was doing it at the same time. ライフスタイル広告そのものは残ってます。で、ただそこで提示されるライフスタイルっていうのが基準とは違って、もっとその家族と一緒に過ごしたとか、あのアウトドアでキャンプをするとか。そういう<音声>